Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to compute z-scores and to find the area underneath the normal curve. A copy of this PowerPoint will be made available for download underneath the video description, so be sure to check it out. Now before we start talking about z-scores and the uh, unit normal distribution, let's talk about the normal distribution in general in terms of its characteristics. The normal distribution is a family of distributions, although each distribution in the family varies depending on its mean and standard deviation, all normal distributions have certain fixed characteristics. A, each is symmetric with the mean, median, and mode of the distribution falling at the centermost point in the distribution. B, the distribution is bell-shaped. C, there is a fixed relationship between the area underneath the normal curve and the standard deviation of that distribution. And then D, the curve is asymptotic, meaning that the tails never actually touch the x-axis, but come closer and closer to the x-axis the more extreme the scores become. The distribution most closely aligned with z-scores is the unit normal distribution. The unit normal distribution basically has a mean that's equal to zero and a standard deviation that's equal to one. And obviously that also means that the variance is equal to one. So here I have a depiction of the unit normal distribution reflecting the relationship between standard scores, that is z-scores, and the area underneath the curve. First, notice that with the respect to the x-axis, these are z-scores or standard scores. So you'll notice that at the mean right here, that basically this is a z-value that's equal to zero. We have z equals to negative one and z equal positive one. Now you'll notice that in terms of the percentage of the distribution that falls between negative one and the mean of zero, that is roughly 34%. And 34% falls roughly between the mean and positive, uh, a positive one Z value. And then the percentage of the distribution that falls between negative one Z and positive one Z is roughly 68%. And that's taken by computing the sum of these two areas right here. You'll also notice that the percentage of the distribution that falls between a positive 1z and a positive 2z is roughly 13.59% or you know, roughly approximately 14%. The same goes between a z value that's equal to negative 2 and a z value that's equal to negative 1. Also, you'll notice that if you sum up all of the areas up to the mean of the distribution right here, that will encompass 50% of the distribution. The same would go on the upper, in the upper tail of the distribution. So that's the remaining 50% here. And so that's why we can say that our distribution is symmetric. Now before we move on, let me just note that there are several other terms that can be used for the unit normal distribution. So you may hear people refer to it as the standard normal distribution, the standard unit normal distribution, or simply the Z distribution. Now, the unit normal distribution is very handy during statistical analyses because it provides a standard distribution to work with when carrying out statistical analyses. And this is important because, as I noted before, the normal distribution is actually a family of distributions, and there's an infinite number of normal distributions based on the combinations of the means and standard deviations of those distributions. So how can the unit normal distribution be used? First, any continuous random variable with a given mean and standard deviation can be converted to a standard score, that is a z-score, that has basically a, where the variable uh, now has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Then following that, we can use the unit normal distribution when it comes to interpreting our data. And the reason why is that the unit normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So assuming your original raw score variable is normally distributed, you can make the conversion to a z-score and then enter the z-table or the unit normal distribution when interpreting your data. So in this uh, depiction right here, this is actually from uh, Neil Sawkins' book from 2014. Basically, it's called Statistics for People Who Think They Hate Statistics. And in this particular de uh, depiction right here, you can see it's got the same depiction as what I'd shown you in the previous slide. But you'll notice it says raw score right here, and then it's got standard deviations. Basically, it's standard deviation units. So essentially, each of these raw scores 
um, right here, uh, that distribution of raw scores has a mean and standard deviation. And then it's essentially this uh, line right here reflects uh, Z scores that, are, that have been computed by converting the raw scores into those Z scores. So Z scores can be computed to ascertain where a raw score falls relative to the mean of a distribution, with the difference between the raw score and the mean being expressed in standard deviation units. After converting a normally distributed variable with a given mean and standard deviation into Z scores, again, you can then access the Z distribution. So how do you convert, uh, or how do you compute Z scores from the original raw scores? First, we have uh, you'll notice that I've got population notation and sample notation, and the computations are exactly the same in both cases. It's just that the notation is a little bit different, reflecting whether you're dealing with population data or sample data. So you'll see in the population notation, I've got X minus mu right here. Mu is the, pop is the notation for population mean. Uh, so you're taking the difference between the raw score on X and the population mean on X, and then dividing that difference by the standard deviation or the population standard deviation, which is denoted as sigma. The sample notation, you'll see that we have x minus x bar. The x bar is uh, the notation for sample mean, dividing that difference by the standard deviation, uh, the sample standard deviation. So basically, the numerator is nothing more than a deviation score, uh, deviating the raw score from the mean, whether it be population or sample mean, and then the denominator is basically the standard deviation for your variable. So in this way, we are essentially converting uh, the raw score on X into a corresponding Z score. So let me just drive home another uh, point, and that is that sometimes folks believe, um, or it's a common misconception, that if you take a raw score distribution that is not normally uh, distributed, uh, and then convert those raw scores into Z scores that somehow the distribution will become normal. That is, an in, that is incorrect. Uh, it is a common misconception and one that you should not carry with you. Technically, you can compute Z scores uh, based off of raw scores irrespective of the uh, shape of the distribution. However, to use the Z scores in reference to the unit normal distribution, uh, the original raw score variable and hence the conversion to z-scores, uh, that the variable basically has to be normally distributed. So please keep that in mind. Um, it is inaccurate to say that converting raw scores to z-scores will somehow transform your original variable into a normally distributed variable. So let's begin with an example. Let's say that we have a set of raw scores on a measure of reading achievement from four students. Furthermore, let's assume these students were randomly sample, sampled from a normal population distribution with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation equal to 3. So we wish to compute the students' z-scores and to figure out where they stand relative to other students in the population using the unit normal distribution. So we have Greta, Bill, Lane, uh, Lena, and Jane, um, so, and their scores are on the right, so 5, 7, 3, and 4. So the first step is to compute the z-scores, and that just basically involves uh, computing a deviation score, deviating each person's uh, raw score on x from the population mean, and then dividing that deviation by the standard deviation. So you'll notice that for Greta, um, now remember that our uh, population mean was 5. So I've right here, the notation, I've got mu right here. And in all of these cases, the population mean was 5. Um, and so their individual raw score, there's seven for uh, Bill. You can see for uh, Greta, there's the five. That's the raw score minus the mean. Uh, and then you can see for Lena, it's one right here. And then for Jane, it's four right here. So we're forming deviation scores in the numerator and then dividing by the population standard deviation, which is three. So in all of these cases, that's why we have a three right here. So you can see that we've converted the z-score. So first off, notice that Greta, uh, her raw score actually falls right at the population mean. So you'll notice that the z-value is zero. And really, again, without really um, having to spend much time thinking about it, uh, at the mean on our unit normal distribution, our mean of zero, we know that 50% of the distribution is going to fall at or below 
Greta score. You'll notice that Bill right here, we have a Z score that's equal to 0.667. So Bill is uh, scoring ab uh, about 0.667 units uh, or standard deviation units above the mean um, on that particular variable. You see that Lena, because this uh, Z score is negative, that's indicating that she's scoring below the population mean. And then Jane, you can see she's also scoring below the population mean as well. So to provide you somewhat with a, a visualization about where these individuals fall, if we assume that the distribution of reading scores is normal uh, in shape, this is where each of these individuals would fall relative to the unit normal distribution. So given our computation of the z-scores, we can now use any z-table to find the proportion of the population distribution that falls at or below each of our students' raw scores. And uh, I have a, a link right here to the appendix from Lomax and Haas Vaughn from 2012, which contains a z-table. Now, the z-table that is given has z-scores that start at zero and actually proceed up to about four. Now, because the normal distribution is actually asymptotic, z-scores would continue on to positive infinity in that direction. But also note that the table is only providing half of the z-distribution. It actually goes in the opposite direction into the lower tail as well. So it will also uh, move from zero towards negative infinity in the negative direction. My guess is that the reason they chose to provide only the positive side of the Z distribution is to save a few trees when printing out the distribution. Nevertheless, you can figure out the areas under the normal curve for negative Z values given that the normal distribution is symmetric. Now to find the proportion of scores that are falling at or below Greta score, we would look in the Z table for Z equals zero. So you will see in the box right here, Z equals to zero right here. And in the PZ column right here, this is the area that falls at or below that Z score. So you can see it's 0.5. And as I said before, uh, basically 50% of the distribution would fall uh, at or below the mean of the distribution. And the mean of the Z distribution is zero. To find the proportion of scores falling at or below Bill score, we would look in the table for Z equals 0.667. And we're actually just going to round up to a Z value that's equal to 0.67 right here. And you can see that we have 0.7485711. So we'll just round off and say that approximately 74.9% of the distribution would fall at or below Bill score. We can also find the percentage of scores within the population that fall between Bill and Greta's locations within the distribution. So this is easily done by subtracting Greta's percentile rank of 50 from Bill's of 74.9. So basically, just taking the percentages that we just saw uh, previously, we would just say uh, take 74.9% and subtract 50%, and that gives us a percentage of 24.9. So in other words, 24.9% of the distribution is assumed to fall between uh, Bill and Greta's uh, locations within the distribution. So now let's find the areas of the population distribution falling at or below Lena and Jane scores. And again, we see the Z scores for both of these individuals are negative. So Lena's Z score is negative 1.333. Now, since there's no negative Z value in the table, as I mentioned before, we will have to figure out the area falling at or below her score, given our understanding that the normal distribution is symmetric. So we can see that at Z equals positive 1.333, or roughly thereabouts, the proportion of scores falling at or below this point is 0 0.908, or basically 90.8% of the distribution falls at or below a positive 1.33 Z value. Moreover, we see that if we subtract the 90.8% from 100%, we end up with the area that's falling in the upper tail of the distribution, so basically above a Z value that is positive 1.33. So arguing from symmetry, this means that 9.2% of the distribution must fall at or below a negative 
So, in other words, only 9.2% of the population distribution has a reading score falling at or below that of Lena's. Similarly, we know that Jane's Z score is negative 0.333. Again, since there is no negative z value in this table, we start by looking for, uh, for a z value that's equal to positive 0.333, or roughly rounded off at 0.33. So we can see that at z equals 0.33, the proportion of scores falling at or below this point is about 0.629, or reflecting essentially 62.9% of the distribution. If we subtract this value from 100%, we see that 37.1% of the distribution would fall at or below Jane's score. Again, given what we know about the percentile ranks for each of these individuals, we can again find the areas of the curve that fall between each of these individuals. We previously showed that 24.9% of the distribution of reading scores fall between those of Greta and Bill. We can also see that the area of the distribution falling between Bill and Lena's covers roughly 65.7%. That's computed by taking uh, Bill's, uh, the percentage associated with Bill's score and subtracting the percentage of scores falling at or below Lena's score. So that's what gets us to 65.7%. Finally, it is worth mentioning that we don't actually have to use raw scores to talk about the area underneath the normal curve. So if I'm curious about the percentage of the normal distribution falling at or below a z value that's equal to positive 1.96, I can still use a table to find that it is 0.975, or basically 97.5% of the distribution would fall uh, at or below a z value equal to positive 1.96. And then again, from symmetry, this means that 97.5% of the distribution would fall at or above a z value that's equal to negative 1.96. Now obviously at positive 1.96, if 97.5% of the distribution falls at or below that point, then that would also mean that 2.5% of the distribution would fall above it. And the same 2.5% would be mirrored on the, in the other tail of the distribution where basically 2.5% of the distribution would fall at or below a negative 1.96. Okay, so that concludes this discussion. Be sure to check out the references page uh, if you want a, a little bit more detail on uh, some of the concepts discussed in this video. Thanks for watching.